In the world today, we're seeing disruption and innovation at a faster pace than ever before. How would you characterize that? What would be the two or three drivers of that innovation that are ongoing right now in your industry? In, in my particular industry, uh, television, we have been serving television shows to consumers in the same way for over 50 years, primarily through linear channels that were broadcast through either free -to television or in the last uh, 30 years through cable and satellite. And the advent uh, of cable and satellite uh, added a new world of choice to millions of consumers around the world. People before cable and satellite could only see two or three or four television channels. Then they got used to watching 100, 200 television channels. Now with the world of internet streaming of television, people are, what are getting used to having unlimited choice and no limits on when they can watch the shows that they want. And they're also getting used to watching shows without interruptions for advertising. So that's creating a new change in uh, expectations or it's creating new expectations in the part of consumers which we need to serve. The leaders who are running this innovation platform and are thinking about new ways to disrupt or taking steps to maybe take bigger risks than they have in the past. Most organizations that have been successful are right are most organizations that are successful are rather risk averse and will punish folks for taking those steps. How is it that you address the issue of bringing along leaders in a way that they feel safe to do so? We, we have to constantly be promoting and rewarding risk taking and being very methodical about failing fast and abandoning projects that have no chance of succeeding, but not punishing people for taking risks. It's something that is much easier said than done, but it's something that I, I believe at companies like Fox we've been very good at. What would be some of the tips that you've found that have been helpful to your colleagues or people who are coming up the ranks? Things that you wish you knew about this process of innovating and, and bringing people along for this ride. What do you wish you knew at the beginning of your career that you know today? Um, I, I think I wish I had known that in any established company there's always to, going to be a system within the system that will slow down change, that will slow down innovation. We, some people call it the bureaucracy, some people uh, call it the compliance apparatus, whatever you call it, there's always going to be a number of uh, barriers to innovation, we cannot do it this way, or it's not the way that it's done here, or there are regulations and laws and policies that prevent that idea from happening. And it's the job of people in leadership to really push everybody who has an idea to do the best that they can to continue to make their idea heard and establish and, 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 and launch by, uh, by the organization. When you form partnerships with others to try to innovate and disrupt and deliver better value to customers. How do you think about the suppliers and vendors like Tata? How do, what kind of role do they play in all of this? Partners obviously are a key part of um, how you get ideas uh, scaled up because you cannot launch any new project without knowing of the implication that a project will have in the complete ecosystem. So any innovation is going to probably disrupt somebody's business. And uh, before you go into it, you need to uh, think about how those companies that have a big stake, a stake enough, big enough to stop your innovation are going to react. This morning we talked about disruption and we had a wonderful exercise about the uh, disruption of our own industries and created a fantasy company to come after us with all they have. What is the disruption that's going on in your industry right now? How would you characterize it for others and, and what's your advice for people as they try to address that? It's, it's very simple. In our industry has been disrupted by the over-the-top players. Uh, we uh, at Fox and companies like us, Disney and Time Warner, we've always been wholesalers. We go and create a great uh, content and put it together with great brands and sell those uh, brands or those in the form of television channels and other applications to retailers like DirecTV and Sky and Time Warner Cable. And now there are companies that are coming over the top of both us and our clients like Netflix and Hulu and others, Hulu in, in which we happen to have a one third stake, and they're essentially disrupting both us and our clients. And in that process they're forcing us to think as a direct-to-consumer company, 
when in the past we always thought of ourselves as a large wholesale company. When you think about the employees that have to address this, what's your advice for them? What are the steps that you'd want to put in place or what message would you like to send to them to say, we can step up, we can make a difference, we can answer this challenge? Uh, it's what I said before, is never give up. Know that there's going to be the system that will try to slow down change, that will try to cling on to the status quo, that will try to cling on to the way things used to be done before, just because it's comfortable. People don't want to change. People don't want to experiment. People are afraid of failure, uh, most people anyway. And uh, the, um, the, the, the biggest, uh, the most sure way to fail is to not try. If there was a message that you'd want to leave that we haven't covered in the scope of this interview right now for the people who are on your team, is there an area that this has provoked in your thinking process that you'd like to, to leave with those folks since we have the cameras rolling and all the rest? Is there any points that we should cover? Um, I, I think our employees are, are actually very, um, very, um, very good at creating ideas and trying to bring those ideas forward. At the, and, and actually, we are the ones that constantly need to be absorbing and filtering which are, which are the ideas that are deserving of funding uh, and of um, people skills. Because today, I think funding is not unlimited, but it, it has um, a, a pretty broad um, limit. Uh, but we are bottlenecked, us and other companies, in how many talented people we can apply to each new project. Uh, usually, you don't want to take your best people away from their day-to-day -day jobs, but if you don't do that, then you won't have the best people uh, to be applied to the new uh, areas of growth. Uh, this morning, I thought it was very interesting that uh, in the room they asked, out of the three uh, following, which one is the most important for, um, you know, for, for sustained growth? And the, the options were operational excellence, innovation and disruption, and M&A, right? And most people said, innovation and disruption, which would be the fashionable thing to do. And I actually order them in reverse. I think, I think of them as a pyramid, where operational excellence is at the bottom. It's a condition necessary but not sufficient to sustain growth. Uh, example, uh, Xerox developed the visual interface for computers, right? Uh, neither Apple nor Microsoft developed it. It was an innovation that came out of the Park Center at Xerox. Yet, Xerox wasn't able to take it to market. Apple and Microsoft did. So that's one example of how sometimes innovation without operational excellence cannot produce uh, growth. And then at the top of the pyramid, you have M&A. A company can be for years and decades without any M&A at all. Uh, and that's perfectly fine. In, in fact, you have the most purity of culture when you don't engage in any M&A. And as you know, most M&A ends up destroying value. But sometimes there, are no way, uh, there is no way of, of bringing a skill set into the company at scale if it's not through M&A. Sometimes, you know, if you're a company that has done, uh, has been a certain business and has always been in that business and all of a sudden you want to pivot that company into another business, uh, there's, there's little you can do other than to buy another company that is in that business and then manage and integrate it well.